Hey everybody, welcome to Almonds and Coconuts, where we talk about slice of life topics focusing on traumatizing, embarrassing, and childhood stories from Indian kids living in America. I'm Arjun. I'm Shiny. I'm Bhavana. And I'm Hasini. And today we're going to be discussing some of our fears or things that we're kind of scared of. I think most of my fears come from watching horror movies because I'd watch a lot as a kid. Uh, most of them is like Bloody Mary. I think that was like the oldest um, like horror movie that I watched. Well, I meant like it's the earliest horror movie that I watched as a kid. And because of that, I would be scared to go to the bathroom because I thought that Bloody Mary would, you know, be in the mirror. So I feel like horror movies had a lot of impact on my fears, such as ghosts when I was little. Oh, Same. Well, um, yeah, go ahead. Same. I, I feel like horror movies in, influence like my fears a lot. Like I watched Conjuring, I guess. And like ever since, like for a long time, I wasn't able to like open my closet because I always thought there would be like someone who looked exactly like me, except with like evil intentions in there. I also had like a big fear of Annabelle. Like, um, like I watched it with my friends when I was like seven or eight, which I shouldn't have, but I did. And um, I'm pretty sure like I remember whenever I see like an animal, like a stuffed animal or any stuffed toy, I always get scared because I keep thinking it's Annabelle. Yeah, I think there was a phase in my life where I just threw away all my stuffed animals because I thought that they were going to, you know, come alive in the middle of the night and haunt me. Actually, that's true, too. But for me, what I did was like, I secretly told them, I was like, oh, you look really good. Or oh, wow, your fur is li- really shiny today. Because I was like, if I compliment them, then when they do come alive, they won't target me. Dude, yeah, but- I would like look at my stuffed animal. I'm like, we're we're friends, right? We're cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I would remember all those times that I traumatized my stuffed animals by like cutting it and stuff. And I was like, uh-oh, but- like I'm definitely going like- to be the first to die. Yeah. but my Like literally, like, like even now, I check behind, like, I sleep that way so that my mirror is behind me. So, like, half the time I'm literally turning back and checking if there's anything on my mirror because I'm so scared something's going to pop out of the mirror. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but if, like, I go to the bathroom at, like, 3 a.m. in the morning, then I'll always, like, stare in the mirror and there's nothing behind me, right? But then I don't trust the mirror, so I have to look Mm -hmm. behind me, like, on my own. And then I look back in the mirror. It's, like, this really weird cycle that just keeps going on. Yeah, and I feel like for me, it's not just like in the night. Whenever I go into the bathroom, I always open my shower curtain to make sure there's no one in the shower behind the curtain. I always look up to make sure there's no one on the ceiling. And then it's like, have you guys ever done that test? I've seen it around TikTok where you put your finger to the mirror and then if there's no space in between. The gap test. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it two way mirror. Like a two-way mirror, yeah. That, I've done yeah. that before. I remember <laughs> Uh, I remember after we watched that movie Friend Request, I that black mirror thing, it still creeps me out because it's so creepy, though. Like, yeah. I'm just afraid of mirrors in general. Because I got scared. Like, so in the movie, if you guys haven't watched it, basically oh, this girl it, will, like, right. commits. Okay, yeah, but it's not a spoiler. Like, it's yeah, like yeah, this just... girl will commit suicide in front of her computer screen because it's a black mirror. So I was always so scared, like, when I first opened my computer or when my phone was dark. So I always have to, like, touch it to make sure that it's bright <laughs> the entire time. Yeah, in my house, I actually have a mirror. And when it's dark, the way the light reflects, it makes it look like it's actually black. And every time I look at the mirror, I remember the the movie scene and I just have to keep looking at the mirror to make sure that nothing comes out of it or something like that Uh, I feel like for me my fears in general yeah that that movie definitely like gave us a lot of PTSD yeah that was a that was a pretty scary movie but I feel like for me in general my fears aren't really from horror movies but I have a I have a big fear of spiders like, if I see a spider, I immediately just tell my parents I can't even deal with it. I have to run away. I have a huge fear of spiders. And then I also have a fear of heights. My fear of heights, it's pretty big. Like, um, I'm not really afraid of, you know, being out in a patio, but I can't, I can't go near the edge of, you know, if there's like a balcony on the second floor or something, I can't go near the edge of the fence, but I'm fine with actually being up there. You know what I mean? Like, I can't look down, but I'm fine with knowing that I'm that high up. 
yeah, so my they're... fear of heights it isn't as big as the fear of spiders but it's still pretty big mm-hmm. i was watching this like youtube video where people uh, mountain climbers they have like they make they sleep on the side of the mountain like twenty thousand feet up in the air. Oh, okay, maybe not twenty thousand, but like several <laughs> several hundred feet. I don't know why I said twenty thousand, but like several hundred feet off the air. And like if they move just a little, I mean a little, they're gonna fall off the edge. And I don't understand how they do that because I mean I wouldn't say I have like a huge fear of heights, but I feel like any normal person that would look at them. It, it just gives you uh, chills. Like, it's just yeah. a YouTube video, and yet I'm so like, scared. I know, them. even those videos where people, like, for me, skydiving, it's like, I feel like skydiving videos, they aren't that scary, but the scariest part is when, like, the initial jump. Like, when, when people are in par- parachutes and they're jumping down, I'm fine with that. But when they have to jump off the plane, that part is scary even just to watch for me. Yeah, because I, f- I feel like most people are actually scared of, like, jumping. But then, like, as it goes, they start Once to enjoy in it. the air, yeah. It's jump scare. And I feel like I wouldn't be able to do bungee jumping because that's, like, you're actually falling the whole time. But with skydiving, at least you have a parachute. So you know that halfway through, you're going to be good. Right, yeah. I was watching this video of these two people. They were skydiving, and one of them crashed into the other one and knocked him unconscious. So I feel like if you're that high up in the air and you, you're you knocked unconscious, I feel like it's like such a big fear because I feel, I mean, it yeah, could happen. Because you have no anyone. control. Yeah. So, so like, if the you're in the, is, um, like, like if you're in the air, no. you don't really have anything else except the stuff you're like, that's on you the, like to protect yourself. So like, if you die, you die in the air somehow. <laughs> like you just jump off a big height and you're scared. Right. I feel like my yeah. parachute would just stop working like I'm that yeah unlucky. just perfect so like it works for everyone else but just for me right? it yeah. decides to um, stop working so my dad went skydiving and his parachute didn't work like oh, he had to use the backup oh. one which doesn't happen very often but it like scares me like it's like very possible that it could happen it's like the chances are low but it's possible yeah and also I feel like with tourists in general they usually have you know, a trained professional with them, jumping with them. But it's like sometimes people, you know, after a while, after you get used to it, some people decide to jump alone. And that's also kind of scary because it's like, you know, you could be trained in a professional, but I feel like jumping alone is always scary. But But I actually Obviously not for them, but for me to watch. But I actually want to skydive. Like, I know that like now I really want to do it, but I know like the day before I'm going to be like, did I really make the right choice? I want to cancel the tickets right now. Yeah. The only way I would probably skydive is if one of my friends literally forced me to. I probably wouldn't want to do that. I I would probably be fine. With bungee jumping, there's absolutely no way I'm not doing that. With skydiving, I would be a little bit more open but I would still be very cautious about it. I don't want to do bungee jumping, but I want to do that thing where like, they'll like tie a rope to you and then you just like lean back and fall. And then you could just like fall until the rope is fully extended, which is like a 50 feet fall, I guess. Is that oh, yeah, not just I've seen those in jumping? Vegas. I, yeah, I it's saw... not like, it's not bu- bungee jumping since you don't actually land. They pull you back again, but like, it's oh, not no, landing. Sure. I feel like those are also very scary because I once saw a video there is a YouTuber that I really enjoy and I watch them a lot and basically they went to one of those places you know where you jump and then the rope has to like bounce you back and then they pull you back except it was one of the highest in the world and it was like thousands of feet I think and basically um the guy who did it he was he was actually really afraid of heights so I could feel his fear when he fell down and the thing is, like, when he did it, he went completely silent. And I was like, I'd probably do that, too. Because it's like, normally people would scream and stuff. But he was just completely silent, closed his eyes. He was supposed to um, put his hands out, but he just didn't. And then, and so I was like, wow, I can feel that fear. Because he was probably just paralyzed from that fear. Yeah, I feel like I might accidentally snap my neck while going bungee jumping or something um, by putting my head in, like, the wrong position. So yeah it's like it's I feel like as kids you know how when you went on a water slide or something they were like oh put your arms in a cross and then you kind of felt rebellious when you didn't do it you're like oh I'm so cool but I feel like in 
the context of skydiving or bungee jumping, that would be really scary. Yeah, dude, talking about roller coasters, that's like one of my biggest fear. I don't know how people go on those loop de doops with those roller coasters. Like, I can't even go on a normal, easy one. I just hate the feeling. I, I feel like, yeah. yeah, no, you know those ones that go upside down? I feel like my seatbelt yeah, is going to come undone. How. Yeah, and then you're going to be upside down. Yeah. The, thing is, the only one I can go to personally, I don't like roller coasters. If I had to actually, if I was forced to go on a roller coaster and I could pick one, I would just go on one that goes up and down. I wouldn't do any crazy stuff. But like right. the only one I can go to is like, is the kids one. And <laughs> because it like, it still has some of that force and stuff, but it's less, um, you know, it's less dangerous or not really dangerous, but it's less, um, I don't know. I don't know. I exactly actually like, I love roller coasters. Like, I know, like, th they're, like, scary, I guess, but I just love the thrill of, like, riding on it. It makes my stomach go up and down and stuff, but I just, it's so fun for me. But there's, like, certain roller coasters that I don't like. Like, um, I saw, like, this story, like, a couple days ago where, like, this doctor, he made a roller coaster. Basically, it'll take you 512 feet up in the air, and then you have a choice. You have to press this button if you want to go further. And if everyone's button says yes, then you can go and it'll take you on seven deadly loops. It gets smaller each time and all the blood will leave your brain and it'll go to your feet. So you essentially die. And it's well, for people. And a doctor people, made that. <laughs> yeah, because it's for un, it's for people with uncurable diseases that want to die in a fun what? way. Ooh, Bro, yeah. that's such a psycho that tactic. That's a fun <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that would be a plot to a horror movie. I yeah, yeah. I feel like doctor. that would be like yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be like a like a an abandoned amusement park, and then because there were maybe like three deaths or something, so they uh, they you know tore it down. But then these kids go into it, and then they try it out for themselves, and then they end up dying. It sounds like it sounds like it would be like the plot of some sort. No, of but like, would you movie. rather die of like? A slow and slowly and painfully or would you rather die by having the thrill of going on a roller coaster I would, have a thrill. I'd be scared. <laughs> I, would, I would probably I would want to be like made unconscious or something and then yeah. put under something and then killed for real like, yeah I don't yeah. I don't think I I hate roller coasters and the idea of a roller coaster that literally kills you is, <laughs> I don't know I, yeah, I, whether I whether I'm gonna whether I know I'm gonna die anyways or not I don't want to yeah. do that like, why can't Honestly, you just be in the hospital bed, say goodbye to everyone? Wow, this is turning dark. But then they, <laughs> they like, put you under anesthesia or whatever, and then they kill you, and then it's done. Quick pain, that's it. But honestly, like, I just feel bad for whoever works there because they have to, like, carry 12 dead bodies out of the roller coaster when it's over. The fact that you're laughing. But, I yeah, I know. I was going to say, like, ha, 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 that's so funny. I, I mean, no, I mean, I we all. Feel I feel like all of us here have a dark sense of humor, but that's a bit. Like, no, like <laughs> I just, I, I don't like cry or like I don't mourn like stuff. I just laugh. Like I have a problem. It's. <laughs> all right, well, it's talking weird. about fears because that's our topic. This is kind of like out of the range, the topic range, or whatever we're talking about. But like the. That, like talking to new people in school I don't know I just hate I'm just socially awkward so whenever I see someone new in school I dread the feeling of like talking to them like you know when the teacher's yeah. like uh, pick a partner pick and a then partner, you don't have any yeah. right and then you don't have any friends in the class and I I hate that feeling because I know it yeah. too well <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, mean, I just I, I just go to the teacher and I'm like oh I'm fine with anyone you can put me in any group but I feel like even walking to the teacher, it's like a walk of shame because everyone can. Everyone knows that. You yeah, know. everyone knows. It's you no know, the worst feeling is when like the teacher puts you in a group of like two people who know each other so well and they kind of don't want you in there. Yeah, uh -huh, right. Walking amongst themselves. Or and then or, just, like, or when it's like, there. or when it's like you're either that one person who um who does everything and then the rest of them just sit there or they're much smarter than you and then they they're just like okay we'll do everything you can just take a break and you <laughs> want to do something but you can't yeah and but then, just sorry go yeah. ahead and no, i was gonna say like i feel like i would consider myself an extrovert because i love i don't know i guess i love talking and i love you know 
yeah all that except the thing is I can't make friends it's like once I have a friend I can huh. talk to them a lot and I can basically just spend hours and hours <laughs> just talking about stuff or playing stuff but to actually make that friend is really hard I actually like my friend oh sorry you can go. Oh, um, I was just saying when I first moved here like to the city that I'm living currently I just I dreaded the first day of school because I'm like an ambivert like Arjun said um I could I could talk to friends once I make them but just the act of going up to a person and introducing yourself is yeah. it's just so hard and you know stressful because I feel like I'm gonna say the wrong things and I always do and it's just really awkward um but yeah yeah I yeah, know and uh, I, I feel like I I I know that feeling, but I feel like I'll know it more because I recently moved. And so the next grade I'm going to start, I'm going to start in a new school, as you guys know. But um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm scared of making new friends because all my friends were at my old school. And so I'm like, mm. yeah, I, I'm also like an ambivert, like ambivert, sorry, <laughs> my Indian accent sometimes. <laughs> um, um, like all my friends like when they first met me they thought I was like this really quiet person that's like really sensitive I don't know why they thought I was sensitive but like I, they thought I was like this really quiet and closed-minded person and then when I really met them they like they're like you you're not quiet I don't know why I thought that in the first place but right. like making friends is always really scary yeah and also breakout rooms like I didn't think it would be this stressful but when someone puts you when your teacher puts you in a breakout room with random people I always feel the urge to say something because it's just really awkward so once yeah, I took no one says anything yeah once I took initiative to say hi and no yeah. one responded and it was like <laughs> yeah. the greatest fear and I was like oh, oh yeah oh. I know that's so true like uh, a lot of times the breakout rooms I get put in are for my math class or where because my school is almost over but basically uh this has happened maybe two times before where I'm like, oh, we're supposed to be working together, right? But obviously everyone has their camera off, everyone's muted. I don't know where they're at in the activity. And so I once asked the question and I was like, oh, what's this? And no one responded. So for maybe two or three minutes, it was silent. And then suddenly someone was like, oh, I got this answer. And I was like, wait, what? And I realized they were answering my previous question, which I had asked minutes ago. And there was an awkward silence in the middle of that. I feel like I never know what to do. Like in some situations, everyone's talk. Like I like my first breakout room, like no one talked, no one said anything. So I thought that's how it always was. So then when I went into another breakout room, the people just thought I was quiet because they were like talking. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. But then in other breakout rooms and I'm like, OK, let's actually try to talk. But then no one talks. So it makes me seem like the talkative one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like it's even worse when the breakout room that you're in, they're like already friends. So they, you know, they're like having a good time and talking. And then I always feel the need to say something. And then I do. And then they just yeah, become quiet. Say something, yeah, and then you just ruin oh. the vibe. And you're like, oh, great. It's just so yeah. awkward. But then also, oh, if you works. don't say anything, you don't get what they're talking about. So exactly. it's awkward yeah. either way. And it's also awkward when they, like, try to include you. Yeah, I feel like when they, in- when they yeah. try to include when they're you. Trying to, when they're trying to be nice, but it just fails. Right, yeah. I had, I had um, the first year I was in my high school, they were in my PE class, I didn't really know anyone. So I hung out with, like, these two friends. And they were already previously friends, so they were, like, super close and all. And I felt like I was always intruding. They tried to make me, like, fit in by including me in conversations, but it's still kind of scary because I kind of knew that they, like, they were closer with one another than they were to me, and I felt like the left, I felt, like, left out, and it was just really awkward most of the time. Yeah, and then, okay, I think we should, like, talk about fears more because I that was our topic anyways yeah I feel like we've talked about like heights and also social interactions which I feel like we all share but for me um another big fear of mine is spiders for sure so are you guys like you know scared of any bugs or spiders or something like that because I know that some people some people are scared of snakes for Uh me a snake is okay uh as long as I know you know as long as I as long as it's pretty much like not on me and not right next to me 
like you know how um sometimes you get well in elementary school and stuff we got those uh, people who came in uh, into an assembly and basically they introduced you know animals and stuff and sometimes we were able to pet the snakes i was fine with that but i feel like for me a snake is okay i'm not going to immediately go towards it and be like oh how cute but yeah. a spider is a big no for real i feel like lizards too in india there are lizards all over the place on the walls in the bathroom so once i was in the bathroom and there was a lizard right next to the door so i if i opened the door the lizard would like fall on me so i was like in a dilemma on whether i should just make it run for it and or just wait until the lizard decides to like move um and I was there for like an hour in the bathroom to, and then, you know, and the lizard would not move. So I feel like lizards are just really scary with their like. That's actually so true. Like in India, there's lizards everywhere, especially, I don't see that many inside houses, but you know, like on the patio or the exterior walls of the houses, I see a lot. And there's a lot in the bathrooms. Well, not mm-hmm. a lot, but you know, they're often in the bathrooms and stuff because, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're usually in places where there's windows or vents because they can easily get through. But it's like, it's not a, like normally lizards are kind of like um, the type of animal that in India, they'll just kind of go away if you approach them or if you get too close. But I yes. feel like it's still scary because, you know, they're they're pretty much everywhere. So you never know when you'll run into one. I'm not that scared of lizards in general, but I'm just like, I just, I'm not comfortable like touching them or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say like, I'm not necessarily scared, but I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. As long as as you're facing and I do my thing, I guess we're we're good, but I just don't (laughs) want them near me. Yeah. Yeah. As long as, okay, six feet and then we're fine. Yeah. (laughs) Social distancing. But yeah. also, like, I'm just, in general, afraid of, like, these bugs in India. Like, once we just, like, so I just woke up, and then, like, I was, like, walking into the kitchen from the room I was sleeping in in India. I didn't realize that I was walking on piles and piles of ants. Like, once I turned the light on, there's, like, thousands of ants just, like, crawling in the living room. And I literally just screamed and I woke everyone up, but that was like the scariest moment ever. I feel like I feel like you would do that, and then everyone's like, "Oh yeah, th- those are just the ants that are always." Yeah, here. that's literally what my grandma did, and then really? she got like a broom, and then she just started sweeping them away like <laughs> it was an ordinary thing. Yeah. Also, can I just say I feel like the ants in India are huge. I know there's different yeah. types of ants, mm-hmm. but it's like in India. Have you ever seen those like? those giant ants just on the ground and they're everywhere right they're like giant and black there's like the small yeah they're giant and the giant black ones yeah those are just creepy yeah there's like the Mm -hmm. tiny tiny ones that are in big bundles but then there's the individual giant ones Mm -hmm. those are just yeah and then it's like they're either super small and you can't really see them or they're giant and it's easy to see it's not like Mm -hmm. here in america it's kind of in the middle I feel like we just have like those like normal sized ants, but they're always in like clusters and clusters. Okay. Yeah, and then somehow, somehow in India, everyone's fine with it. They're just like, oh, that's an ant. Oh, that's it's a, a normal bird. thing for them. Like they're used I, to I, it. Obviously, nice. yeah. But it's like, it's weird to think about that. Because here it's like, we don't get, you know, we might get some cockroaches occasionally, but we don't get that many, you know, we don't have to on a daily basis deal with all these, you know, animals. Mm-hmm. yeah for sure also like cockroaches now that you mention it <laughs> uh, those are yeah. also nasty bugs yeah, yeah like, bugs in general are not that you know they're not horrible but they're also not cool but cockroaches are disgusting I don't know yeah, there's I some just... bugs there's some bugs I can kind of deal with like ants I'll just step over them or like walk around them but with step cockroaches on them? I can't even no, I, I never step on animals. I just feel like it's too weird. I like, I there's like, there's like two kinds of people in this world. Like the people who will like trap a spider, but then like let it go free let outside. Go. That's me. But I'm like the opposite. I'll be like, kill it, kill it. <laughs> For me, it's like, I don't care. I don't care if it's alive or dead as long as it's gone. So I, I'm just like, okay, just get it away. Because if I kill it, then it's a whole other thing. Like, first of all, I have to actually physically touch it and kill it whether it's with no with you stick don't or something. no just, i'm saying like yeah, okay. no whether it's with a stick or your shoe or something you have to actually get close to it and kill it 
and second of all you have to then remove its dead body i don't know just for me it's easier to like, but, remove it from the premises for me like cockroaches are like scarier than other animals because they're like huge okay and yeah, when you like are huge. and when if you do manage to kill them like you have to pick up like even if it's with a tissue like one time i tried picking up a dead cockroach and its guts like bleeded through the oh. tissue oh god it I literally washed my hands like more than you would wash your hands if they had corona on them. <laughs> that's how that's how I feel about spiders though. Like I feel that way about both spiders and cockroaches. Like it feels weird to have to pick them off. Yeah. Um moving on from bugs. I think this is just mostly <laughs> just me, but I have like mild trypophobia, you could say, which is like the fear of close packed holes. And I was like every time I walk um, home from school, there would be like acorns that are like um, in the dirt, and if you take them out, there are holes in the dirt, and it would always bother me because I just I hated the holes and I just couldn't look at it because it was so disgusting. Oh, for me, okay, like, that's. I don't really, um, you know, it's not. I don't really have trypophobia. But it's like, it kind of depends. Because like, for example, think of a honeycomb. Some people have trypophobia with that, but I think it actually looks really cool. But I feel like in other cases, it depends on, it depends on the context, you know, what type of hole it is and like, right, yeah. where exactly. Have you I ever have... seen those pictures of like hands with a bunch of holes oh. in them? Like I know it's oh. makeup, but yeah, those are really bad. But you know, some I... things are okay. I have never heard of this fear before, but to me, like I know what you're talking about though like it's not like a fear to me it's more of like severe discomfort yeah. like yeah. yeah like every time I look at it like I just searched up trypophobia right now um I, I don't know why I thought that was a good idea but the pictures there some of them like I won't say I'm scared of it I mean no one's scared of the holes it's just so yeah. uncomfortable to look at it's weird to look at yeah yeah okay um well yeah i mean we've talked about a bunch of fears so i feel like those are more general fears that we talked about but you know i don't really have super specific or irrational fears we basically covered them all though like social fears general yeah, yeah. fears like height and then like even specific ones like a bunch of clustered holes Specific bugs <laughs> yeah, <and trypophobia>. yeah. <laughs> anyways yeah i think that's all we have time for today so i guess we'll have to call it here you know like subscribe follow do everything and yeah we'll record more episodes soon and we'll release them soon see you guys next time bye bye mm-hmm.